Today, we turn our attention to the tireless heroines of the bird world, dedicated mother songbirds. Their endurance during each nesting cycle reveals extraordinary challenges and the true magnitude of their unwavering commitment. A mother bird's efforts begins with nest building, a laborious task that demands a lot of energy. For birds like robins, bluebirds, tree swallows, goldfinches, and hummingbirds, they work very hard to build and shape their nests. And some female song species are solely responsible for carrying all the material to the nesting site as well. Take for example this little chickadee who averaged four trips every 10 minutes. Mind you, this was not continuously done all day long. She took several breaks. One paper detailed the remarkable nesting behavior of gnat catchers. And while both male and female helped build the nest, the females were making about 11 to 12 trips every half hour. Sometimes the distance each bird travels per trip is also very substantial. This robin made several trips from a large sweet gum tree about 50 feet away from this bird bath. And while gravity aids her descent, the journey back up to her nest becomes a challenging struggle against its force. The time it takes mother birds to build their nest varies, influenced by factors such as material availability, time spent defending the territory, weather conditions, and other factors. Generally, the process spans a few days up to a week, though I've seen it take a chickadee nearly two weeks to complete her nest because another chickadee kept intruding into the area. Primary cavity nesters such as woodpeckers, nuthatches, titmice, and chickadees face an additional challenge. These birds are capable of excavating their nest holes, crafting the right shape and depth for their nestlings. The excavation process can take a few days up to a week for many species. Shaping the nest can also be a tiresome process. Many female species not only build the nest, they also spend a great deal of energy forming the perfect round nest cup. For birds that make neat nest cups like robins, bluebirds, cardinals, and chickadees, they must shimmy around in the nest as they add material to get the right size and shape. That shimmy action serves another purpose. Not only is she making the perfect little egg basket, she's also molding it to her body so that when it's time to incubate her eggs, between her and the nest itself, those eggs will stay nice and warm. For open nesters like robins and cardinals, being able to seal the nest with their body also shields their babies from the elements. Once the nest is complete, some mother birds will take a brief break spanning a few days up to nearly two weeks before they start laying their eggs. When the time is right, she will usually lay one egg per day, building her clutch until it reaches completion. However, nature's whims may lead them to skip a day or surprise us with multiple eggs in a single day. The process of egg laying usually unfolds during the morning hours. With the aid of a nest camera, I've seen this process take anywhere between a few minutes up to half an hour. Egg laying demands a substantial amount of calcium for the mother to produce the eggshell. While some bird species can use a little bit of stored calcium from their skeletons for egg formation, researchers Scott Johnson and Robert Barclay, who were studying house wrens, noted that a single clutch requires almost the same amount or more calcium than what the mother bird has in her skeleton. Regular foraging trips for arthropods and berries, which form the staple diet of wild birds during the nesting season, do not provide an adequate amount of calcium for mother birds. As a result, they must actively seek out calcium-rich objects to meet their nutritional needs. Calcium deficiencies lead to smaller clutch sizes, fragile eggs that break, and even dangerous situations for mother birds such as egg binding. Fortunately, there are ways we can help mother birds. Dusting live mealworms with calcium carbonate can provide a much-needed supplement. You can also contribute by saving and drying eggshells, grinding them into a fine powder, and lightly sprinkling them over mealworms you offer your birds. While calcium supplementation is extremely helpful, it's not advisable to use products like calcium supplemented bark butter and nuggets from bird shops because bark butter attracts invasive starlings that regularly harm native songbirds. Once the mother bird has laid all of her eggs, the next stage begins where she carefully tends to each egg during the incubation period. While her feathers are excellent at helping her retain heat and allow her to stay warm and dry, they're not efficient at transferring heat to her eggs. However, nature has an interesting solution. Through hormonal changes, she develops a specialized spot known as a brood patch. This featherless area on her breast is full of blood vessels that let her sense how warm or cool her eggs are, or if they need to be turned. Disguised amidst her plumage, the brood patch is something only lucky observers will see. 
Yet during the nesting season, a keen eye may catch a glimpse of a faint vertical line traversing her belly or a slight exposure when she stretches or fluffs her feathers. However, when she enters her nest to sit on her eggs, she will shimmy herself, fully exposing the brood patch over her eggs. The incubation period varies among different bird species. For many songbirds, this period lasts about 12 to 14 days. However, birds of prey like falcons, hawks, and owls have a longer incubation period, lasting close to a month or even slightly over. While incubating, mother birds endure a multitude of challenges. Open nesting birds such as robins, cardinals, and mockingbirds face the force of nature's elements, sometimes braving fierce winds, torrential rain, and even hailstorms. There are other unanticipated factors mother birds face while incubating her eggs. For example, this robin didn't realize that her nest was so close to a light pole. Not only did she go through a hailstorm, but she also had to sit on her eggs with the bright light shining on her all night, every night. Mother birds must remain vigilant during incubation and while warming her nestlings. Predators both cunning and opportunistic pose a constant risk to their safety. Open nesting birds will try to stay on their nest as long as they can, or they'll try to chase off threats, but predators can be very stealthy. And cavity nesting birds face a different challenge. The confines of their nesting spot protects them from bad weather, but it also limits their ability to escape if a predator approaches. Where open nesting birds have all sorts of directions to escape, cavity nesting birds become trapped in the box when predators reach in. Nest invasions from other bird species compound these threats. For instance, cowbirds are known for their parasitic behavior, depositing their eggs into the nest of other birds. If undetected, the cowbird egg will hatch and divert parental care away from the host bird's own young. Non-native birds like house sparrows and European starlings, with their aggressive nature and dominance, are notorious nest invaders. They target nest boxes and tree holes, destroying eggs, attacking nestlings, and even fatally attacking adult birds. Just as mother birds can become trapped in a nest box with a predator, the same occurs when invasive birds attack. These two invasive species have also been reported to attack open nesting birds as well, but that's rare. House wrens, a native North American bird, also invade active nest boxes when the parents are taking a break from the nest. The house wren will go in and remove the eggs or very young nestlings and start to build their own nest. Challenges only intensify once her eggs hatch. The demanding task of feeding her nestlings requires numerous trips away from the nest in search for food. For many songbird species, the father is equally attentive and feeds their young. Despite the help, nestlings need a lot of food, which means a lot of flights to and from the nest to hunt for insects and larvae. In a study on prothonotary warblers, female birds were observed making an average of 306 visits to the nest per day for broods of three nestlings, and an average of 396 trips per day for broods of five nestlings. One notable finding from the same study on prothonotary warblers discovered female warblers lost a collective average body mass of 10% during their first brood and 11% during their second brood, with most of the decline occurring after the eggs hatched and feeding began. Recognizing the efforts of bird parents may inspire you to provide food for nesting birds, which is excellent. However, some important things to keep in mind is that parent birds are supplying their nestlings mostly with live bugs, not seed. Bugs not only provide a good source of protein for nestlings, but it's also how they stay hydrated. In fact, dry mealworms as supplemental food is not recommended for nestlings because it can dehydrate them. Instead, supplement with live mealworms. Additionally, encouraging biodiversity in your yard with native plants and a garden can also make a huge impact. The mother's responsibilities extend beyond nourishment when she raises her young. In these early stages, she also assumes the crucial role of brooding her young or sitting on them to protect them and keep them warm. Even during the brooding phase, mother birds remain vulnerable to the same threats she faced while sitting on her eggs. Yet without her, very young nestlings, pink and naked, really couldn't stay warm, especially during early spring. Sometimes, tragedy strikes, and one of the parents perishes during the nesting cycle, leaving the surviving bird to shoulder the immense responsibility of raising nestlings alone. This mother bluebird returned to her nest in rough shape after a very bad storm. She had four eggs and sadly her mate didn't make it. Widowed mothers, as I'll call them, can sometimes find new mates to help them out with their nestlings. That was the case for this bluebird. However, there are instances when a female songbird is unable to find a new mate, or her new partner may not provide substantial assistance. In these situations, the mother bird must undertake the demanding task of fulfilling all the nesting trips required in addition to protecting her nest and keeping her nestlings warm. 
While it's not an insurmountable feat, the solitary duty can be physically taxing and stressful to the mother bird. If you suspect you have a single mother bird in your vicinity, there are ways you can ease her burden. Offering daily live mealworms, lightly dusted with calcium, provides a valuable resource that supports her health as well as her nestlings. Additionally, providing extra shepherd hooks or perching branches give her strategic observation spots, allowing her to scout for insects and swoop down to collect her prey. The culmination of a mother bird's efforts happen when nestlings successfully take their first flight and fledge the nest. Once the fledglings leave the nest, they don't return, and they face a wild world full of danger and beauty ahead. But mother and father birds continue to care for their young even after the nestlings leave. For certain bird species like bluebirds, the nesting season may encompass multiple broods, while other songbirds like chickadees usually only have one brood per year. But by next spring, the entire process starts all over again. While we can acknowledge the valuable contributions of many father birds during the nesting season, I want to shine a light on these amazing mother songbirds and the incredible commitment and bravery it takes to raise the next generation of birds. Watching them, their commitment to their nest, and their dutiful sacrifices reminds me of how interconnected nature really is, and it can deepen our appreciation, not just for birds, but for the entire web we're all a part of.